Good evening, everyone. It's a week after Maundy Thursday. It's a Thursday evening at the moment. And what we have been doing um, on Thursday evenings is going out, clapping our hands or banging a saucepan, that's what we've been doing, to give thanks for the NHS, for all those who are working there. As we are on a Thursday evening, I thought I would share with you a few thoughts, funny enough, about foot washing. It's something I used to do as an orthopaedic nurse and indeed a ward sister, was to kneel down and wash people's feet. Last Thursday, on Maundy Thursday, we had the story of Jesus washing the disciples' feet. I'll go a bit into that later. But this Thursday, we will start with a reading from John's Gospel, where it is actually Jesus having his feet washed. And so Eunice King, my church warden, will give us our reading. The reading is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 12. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for three hundred denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Eunice, for that reading from the Gospel of John. And thank you also to my husband, Mark, who offered his feet that I may wash them last Maundy Thursday and video them so that I could share that with you. See how intimate a thing it is to wash somebody's feet. You get used to all their, their bunions and their corns and their nails and their hard skin and things as you're doing it. Some people might go, Ugh. <laughs> but actually washing feet is the most beautiful thing to do. When Mary washed Jesus' feet, she washed them with her tears. She dried his feet with her hair. 
and she poured nard, a most expensive and beautiful perfume, onto his feet. And as she did this, dear old Judas moaned at her. He moaned at her, sort of saying, oh no, you shouldn't waste that on him. We could have sold that for the poor. And Jesus said, you don't realise, do you? She's preparing me for my burial. It is one of those heart-wrenching stories in the Bible. And for me, it is even more poignant because she does this well before Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, where we've got all the palm waving and saying Hosanna. Well before the time when he washes the disciples' feet. And Peter says, oh, no, no, you're not washing my feet, Lord. You know, no, 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 you don't do that. And Jesus says, well, unless I do do that, you can have no part of me. In other words, no part, part of my anointing. And what was Jesus anointed to be? The servant king. The leader, if you like, of us all, but one who gives of himself in service to us and for us. And I just thought, as I remembered that tonight we've been out clanging away for our National Health Service, for our medical teams, for our nurses, for all the ancillary staff, everybody really who has anything to do with hospitals, hospices, care homes, those who are caring in homes. It is a time of service. It is a time of completely giving oneself for the care of that which is other. And we have had not only those who have given themselves in service, but those who have given their lives in service. And I felt it was only right to commemorate and remember all of those dear nurses and doctors who have paid the final price those who, like Jesus Christ, when he washed his disciples' feet, this was a gift given to me by dear, dear friends after the first Maundy Thursday of me being here, when I washed their feet. And that took them by surprise. It was such an intimate encounter with, I pray, the Lord God, through my loving hands, washing their feet as Christ washes his disciples' feet. Christ went on to pay the final price so that we might know God, God's love, the fact that God is life itself, not only this life but eternal life, but also that God is intimately connected with us through acts of kindness and compassion, through serving in a completely sacrificial way. And I would like this evening to say huge thanks to our National Health Service and particularly to those who have given all of themselves for the sake of others. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, you give us healing people as gifts to the world. I pray for all who are healing and caring for people, who are serving people with their love, their tenderness, their skill, their talent, their knowledge, their very presence. This night I pray for every nurse and doctor that is beside a sick patient. I pray for every care home worker who do not leave their post but stay with those who are ill or dying. 
I pray for all who work in the hospices that are alongside not only the patient, but perhaps a few family, caring for them in their grief on this journey. Dear and loving Lord, you have not caused this to occur, but you are part of the recreation through it. So I do pray dearly to you for your protection for all who work in the care industry. I pray for those who are part of the paramedic system, the ambulance system, the police system, and indeed the fire service, all of whom who play their part in this ongoing journey of helping and healing. We commend them all to you for your loving protection, your presence to give them courage when the going gets tough, your commitment to them that you are with them and their patients all the way. And loving Father, as we thank you for the gift of healing, we thank you that your son the Anointed One anoints us as we heal people. So I pray for your utter blessing on those who are working with or in our National Health Service this night and always. Amen.